Hello and welcome to In Focus, the first program for 2022, a special edition, of course, uh, from MTV, uh, with the support of the Media Development Initiative, our good friends who are supporting us in this one-hour edition. And our topic of discussion, of course, is sorcery accusation-related violence, a hot topic since December. It has been for many, many years, and we still continue um, in trying to address this in our country, Papua New Guinea. And I'm privileged to have with me on the panel to discuss this uh, using this virtual forum. I'm, of course, the chairman for the Special Parliamentary Committee on GBV, also the member for Alotau, uh, Charles Abel. Say welcome to the program. And Thank we you, also- Thank you. And we also have uh, Shelley Kaupa, an advocate for women and children's rights. Shelley, welcome to the program. Thank you, Bradley. And good All afternoon, right. listeners and viewers. All right, good to hear and also, you. And um, also acknowledging our colleagues from UN. Thank you to be part of the panel and observing it. Right. So as, as part of this virtual um, recording that we're doing, uh, we have viewers and, and listeners tuning in uh, from all over the country and, and different uh, uh, stakeholders in society also joining us uh, for the discussions uh, here today. Now, um, first of all, we'll start off with the Special Parliamentary Committee. Um, we'll hear from the chairman himself of the of the work they're doing in terms of addressing some of these uh, social accusation related violence, uh, more so related to women's issues uh, here in Papua New Guinea. Ms. Tabor. Yeah, Bradley, thank you. And uh, I want to acknowledge all the people that are tuning in uh, today. And uh, of course, Shirley Kapa herself and the good work that many such small organizations do mm -hmm. in contributing, in contributing to, this, to um, this important uh, issue. And uh, I thank MTV and everyone else that continues to advocate and um, speak about this uh, issue, which is of great concern to us all. I also, you know, continue to acknowledge the government for elevating the issue uh, around gender-based violence. And of course, related to that is a sorcery accusation related violence. And I'm proud to have been um, nominated as a chair and have taken up that role and um, tried as much as possible within the short space of time that we have had to, um, at the very least, table a comprehensive report and get the recommendations or the endorsement of parliament of those 72 recommendations. Uh, that are there, and um, SAV, Sorcery Accusation Related Violence, is very much a feature of that report. And in fact, it's within those 72 recommendations, uh, it is highlighted in the executive summary in one of the seven main elevated issues we uh, we talk about the SAV uh, matter. So the Parliamentary Committee has a certain role. Uh, people need to understand that... Um, we are not, uh, we are not uh, the operational side of things. There's a very clear role for parliamentary committees uh, to um, specifically bring recommendations and reports to parliament after conducting um, mainly through inquiries and, and holding agencies of government to account and finding solutions and bringing them to parliament so that further measures can be, uh, can be undertaken. But um, it is disturbing. Of course, we continue to say that 56% um, uh, of our girls and women above the age of 18, between age of 18 and 56, uh, have experienced some form of um, violence, domestic violence. And um, uh, within that, again, is uh, captures sorcery accusation-related violence. And um, we seem to see an increasing prevalence of, uh, of this gender-based violence. And disturbingly as well, it's even uh, extending as far as our children now. And as we speak about uh, sorcery violence, children now uh, are being uh, accused for different reasons. And, um, you know, I was just talking today about a particular case, I think in Jiwaka, um, we're back in November, uh, a case that highlights this point, a child had been tortured for three months by her very own uh, auntie, and uh, then itself is disturbing. But then, of course, subsequently, uh, what measures, what are the courses of action uh, that we, our agencies, undertake subsequently 
to uh, protect the child and to um, prosecute the perpetrators um, is a major issue because very few people seem to be held to account um, for, uh, you know, whether it's just domestic violence in general or particularly a sorcery-related uh, violence. And so it, it's very concerning. And, um, you know, I'm proud that we've been able to elevate this issue. I'm proud that, uh, you know, the police seem to be uh, taking these matters uh, a bit more seriously. Of course, the government is taking it uh, more seriously. But so much more needs to be done. And we are grateful that uh, we do have some of these frontline agencies that do a lot of the work that government should be doing, actually. And uh, it was only um, uh, yesterday that I was able to visit, uh, for example, the, through the Child Fund, the counselling wonderful counseling services through toll-free hotline uh, on domestic violence and i know there's many many others particularly the ones that uh you just started to show the video there and i'm sure it'll be te it'll be televised but there's people on the ground in our provinces that uh, are providing refuge that are doing the hard work of going into communities where they're mobilized and um and uh, attacked these women we have very brave people that that are there, the pastors as well, uh, some leaders and some of these NGOs and organizations that are doing the tough work. And, you know, I, I'll be the first to admit that government is, is, has been too slow and there is not enough um, attention, there's not enough uh, work being done within the police and the, and the Justice Department, government system, on, on a whole range of issues related to prevention of this issue, awareness and prevention, Prosecute, uh, dealing with the helping the victims and then the prosecution uh, process. So much uh, more needs to be done. Going back as far as 2014, when the Sorcery um, Act was repealed, and of course the criminal code was amended under Section 299A to, to add in there the crime of uh, sorcery-related violence or, or death has actually been included in the criminal code now uh, as a crime. And one of the aspects I want to highlight around that um, that is alluded to within the name of sorcery accusation violence is the accusation side of it. And something that we've highlighted also in our, our report, the role of the glass man or glass Mary or the accuser in this process it has been found that 60% of cases, there is some sort of uh, accuser or particularly a glass man or glass Mary that is involved. And we feel it's very important as some of the work we're doing today with the help of the Tribal Foundation that you mentioned to bring to the floor of parliament an amendment um, to the criminal code to make um, those people accountable who take advantage and... Uh, and um, become part of the process that uh, initiates the violence by, um, uh, you know, accusing or revealing or pointing out um, allegedly with their powers um, and then um, inciting, helping to incite that violence. Those people need to be held accountable as well in the prosecution process, which is very, very uh, important. But our report is available uh, online if, if people... Uh, search the parliamentary committee gender-based violence uh, interim report is called the, the there's a lot of excellent comprehensive work done in there um, but uh, as I said a report is one thing but um, but um, a lot more needs to be done one of the things and I'll just just been finishing here that we've been able to achieve as people know is that in the 2022 budget uh, eight million has been allocated um, uh, for the gender-based violence secretariat that will be, uh, is, is actually already set up in the Department of Community uh, Development, Youth and Church. Um, this will enable that to be properly established and, and then th they are the ones to actively take on the implementation of the gender-based violence uh, strategy plan. And uh, there are elements within that that also relate to uh, sorcery accusation related uh, violence. So, uh, Bradley, there's uh, there's so many aspects to it. Um, we can talk about specific ones within that, but otherwise, generally, it's it's becoming a major issue. 
and it's deeply concerning. I keep saying that in a Christian country, we see um, uh, these sort of incidents of burning um, uh, women, uh, particularly older women, and even children are now being tortured and uh, and, and are suffering. And it's 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 very hard to uh, to manage the process. And even when we try and rehabilitate, return to the community, etc., it's just and one wonders what is what is driving this. It, it doesn't seem to be part of the culture in many of the areas where it is happening. And, uh, you know, there's some deep underlying issues that need to be addressed to fully understand this issue. And that is why an important element of it is, is the working with the, with the men, the male side of the issue, to engage with men properly and try and um, have an aspect that is uh, making them more educated, more aware, and part of the solution. Um, because many, many of the perpetrators tend to be male, and we, we need to make sure that that is an element of the solution. The engagement with men, the education process, and so on, are very important. Yes. All right. So um, we'll hear from uh, Shelly Kaupa now. Uh, Ms. Abel spoke about action. Um, uh, your group has certainly pushed for, for action amongst the uh, authorities, the police, the justice system to hold those uh, accountable uh, for the recent case in the Southern Highlands. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, firstly, um, Bradley, um, I don't think um, I'm able to talk about uh, the responsibilities of the police or community development or DJ. Um, I'm not uh, kind of a scrutiny that I scrutinize them, but we also have, as human rights defenders, we have the right to, you know, put in report to all people accountable so the processes and procedures can be followed and so we see um, prosecution. And also in terms of um, continuous our awareness and education, advocacy, um, actually to deal with the civil society voice to make sure that the mandated officers or state entity must make sure that they do their work right accordingly and diligently. So in terms of responding to sorcery association related violence or assault in PNG, um, firstly, I want to say that SAW, it's not part of our culture. It's not PNG way of doing things. Our culture, in terms of violence, one is tribal violence. They're very good at fighting, and they fight with men. Men and men fight. And women and children are the ones that they carry their bags and billows and pigs and running from one village to the other. And for burning and torturing women, putting them on the fire, this is not Papua New Guinea way of doing thing. So the question that should come back to him, so each and every one of us, where did we import this culture? How did this culture first uh, started in Papua New Guinea? This is uh, a very critical question that we should question ourselves and um, in terms of carrying out awareness, right to the remote and rural places, we can try to, you know, tell people about this story, our own stories, our own PNG stories of sharing, carrying the Melanesian values, the Christian way of doing things, um, taking care of people from other villages. These are very important to us in terms of educating our people. What actually happened that it turned the whole culture of Papua New Guinea into a violence culture? Rape, killing, sexual abuse, stuff. These are not our culture, our way of doing things. That's the first uh, point that I want to talk and um, also as you said, responding to all forms of violence, we either come from the prevention side or response side. And for us, the civil society network under the sub-protection cluster, we've been doing a lot. The church, the NGO, the community base, 
as you can see in the villages and in the sub um, national provinces to the districts and communities an organization is made up of one or two people for example our human rights defenders in the highlands of Papua New Guinea when you find out about the organization you will just find out that they are made up of one or two people three or four people and they're very powerful in terms of responding to victims and survivors of sound and those men and women they place their life right on the spot in terms of danger and on that we also don't have the protection bill in place to protect us and i commend all those people that they work really hard they are the ones that they bring the news out or they are the ones that they they report to the police or to the community health worker and it's not that easy for a single person or two three person to actually um, stand strong and against a group or a community of men who engage in such um, act of violence so you can see that responding to sub in our country it's a nationwide approach it's a society societal responsibility it has to start right in the village and places where all these actions are taking place it has to start from the village leaders youth leaders community women rep pastors church elders village court magistrates peace mediators land mediators village court magistrate all these people in the villages with the police they are the ones that are first responder all right for us outside in the provincial level or at the national level we are tired for like we'll come after the damage after the damage has been caused or done and we will just respond and we'll just go to the media but actually in prevention it's the people that are right there in the sub-national or in the district wards communities like in every uh, remote places in, or villages there must be a church a pastor will be present a village court magistrate will be right there a village court magistrate you know under the village court act he is the mandated person and he represent law it's not the supreme court here in wigan he represent supreme court or national court right in the village and we have to you know make a strong more awareness that people must know the value the integrity the power of a village court magistrate a peace officer in the village a lot of people think they are just ordinary men and women like themselves and they can outplay them and overpower them yeah well shelly look um, this is a, a big issue and and you quite uh, rightly put um you know it, it has to come that from the bottom up huh? in right throughout the rural areas the we can you know make uh, recommendations here but implementation must must start from the bottom we'll take a short break now and come back on the other side with more of the discussions Welcome back. You're watching In Focus. Still our discussions on sorcery accusation related violence. And I have with me, um, joining me on the uh, virtual connections, of course, uh, Shelly Kaupa, a human rights, rights uh, activist and also the chairman of the Special Parliamentary Committee on GBV, Charles Abel, the member for Alotau. Okay, still on our conversation uh, before the break. Now we'll just play a video of uh, a news package that we filmed in the in the Highlands. Uh, women suffer the most. Huh? And uh, that's from a constable uh, in the uh, Kagua area. Um, one of only five officers, police officers on the ground. They were the first uh, with... Um, uh, uh, um, an effort with uh, those from the highlands uh, particularly from mendy they responded and uh, saved uh, two of the women uh, out of the five who were uh, accused of practicing uh, sorcery the video went viral um it wasn't 
pleasant for viewing. But they they did uh, make an attempt and they rescued uh, two of the women. Here is his account of uh, what had actually happened and what actually um, will happen now um, for justice uh, for these women. Jonah Kosen is one of the only five police officers serving this police station in Kagua, a district with an estimated population of some 90,000 people. That's equivalent to a policeman to 18,000 people in the one district. He tells us of the recent incident involving the torture of five women accused of practicing sorcery. Three died from the ordeal. PPC give him time law for community but give him in or surrender him for suspects or or let must voluntarily come na surrender. Uh, Commissioner of the police give him for that finish law make him mass arrest mass arrest in the event where or refuse to come surrender. As soon as PPC am ready want them operation orders them. And by talk several or one time if go inside. The constable says men are also accused of practicing sorcery, but women suffer the most. Mostly also accused of men na tani time will marry. Trango will marry sa mga victim do. Sla all sorcery related to issues here. Or plenty time will marry ta sorcery. Time will accuse of men time and travel fight states sa kama. Tribe men are relatives uh, protecting all tribe men. Bro. All accusing all Mary, all clan a tribe, all sort of integrity, bro, kind of sama, community and family. So you make him, you bagara the name, you make a tribe, you make a clan, you make So one is protecting all Mary again. When asked if he believed in sorcery, as a Papua New Guinean, he says he does. We believe was a Miga Tsanguma stuff. Poison stuff or the stuff. But me not looking to her. As an officer of the law, he says it's difficult to deal with sorcery related accusation cases. Law, you know, come clear straight law. All sorcery or related issue, yeah. Time all accusing one pla. But me pla hard law, court him and arrest him because you know got evidence. You know, get a case, me pla arrest him and accusing go to court, me pla say present him evidence. In Kagua, a small safe house has been set up for survivors of sorcery accusation related violence. It's a home for many who have come through to seek help. People are running this law, Southern Islands women demand for change. Women demand for change, so some people are like, take care of all this kind of problem, mama, all mama, where all the victims, all the suspects, all the people are sorcery, all kind of something that is the area. Now, Kagua era of district and one blah hot spot. They have made food gardens to help provide food for the women who have come here. Several even come here with their children. The women at the safe house are also looking after pigs to raise some income to help sustain the home. A uh, news package there of uh, uh, the situation on the ground in, in Kagua. Um, as a member of parliament, uh, Mr. Abel, you, you, you come from an electorate where um, I mean, you look after people in Alotau. Um, but look, um, as a member of parliament, uh, what would you do if it happened in your district? I think the video did highlight many of the apparent issues, particularly for the police when trying to prosecute such matters. Um, you know, in terms of getting people to come forward or... or, or um, protection of the community uh, or the the community being complicit um, as a group in, in making some of these uh, attacks on the women makes it very difficult for the police. But I I am from a province, obviously, Millen Bay, where we have our domestic violence issues, but we have very, very few cases of um, sorcery-related violence. Um, it is not uh, part of our culture, although sorcery, there's an element of sorcery within the culture. There is no culture of violence related to sorcery. But uh, certainly if, if a matter was um, reported, I would react to it um, in, in the same way we would react to any uh, issues related to breaking the law. Uh, you know, we would, re we would report it and we would expect action uh, from the police. And then, of course, uh, we've got a Mary safe house there. We've got um, 
a uh, provincial government uh, offices there that deal with uh, community and uh, women child uh, welfare we would we would access and get uh, those people uh, involved um, but as I said I don't I don't have to deal fortunately with um, that issue very much in uh, in Milan Bay although we have other <laughs> violence related issues um, that we that we do have to deal with but I think the point the point is a difficulty in bringing the perpetrators to justice and what we need to do as as a uh, as all stakeholders including the government we need to make a concerted effort to hold some of these people to account we can't solve the issues uh you know overnight but certainly we can send a, a strong signal to our communities and our public that when you commit such um uh actions against people it, it is it is uh you're breaking the law and you have to be held to account and what i've been impressing upon uh, particularly through our police minister and, and uh, police commissioner we must prosecute when you have these incidents that happen there must be a prosecution the evidence is overwhelming the video evidence the eyewitness events uh that are there the victim statements it's completely and utterly overwhelming who has done this crime but why is it so difficult to arrest those people and bring them to account that is the issue and when you don't bring them to account people think that it's okay that they can get away with doing this kind of thing and so you know all the underlying issues but deterrence is one of the biggest things that uh that uh, will make our people respond if you harm another human being uh, for whatever reason, including sorcery, it is a crime. And in fact, the law goes beyond that. It's not just the harming, it's, it's, it's damaging of goods, stalking and other things all covered in the law. To say the law is not clear on sorcery, that's not true. The law is very clear. It's a criminal offense. And uh, nowadays with social media, the evidence is overwhelming. I just mentioned about that child today from Jiwaka that uh, was abused for three months and tortured and that's now is having to undergo operations to fix her body. Um, the evidence and the, and the police reports and the witness statements are overwhelming. Yet this person that has done that crime is walking around free today. That's the basis of the, uh, the crux of the issue. If people are not punished, they think they can get away with it and take advantage of this. And which is not even part of our culture. And that's another discussion, but I think we need to punish some of these people to send a strong signal that this is absolutely and totally wrong and will not be tolerated by government. Uh, and more of us need to speak up about this and demand. I don't understand how whole groups of people can torture old ladies and children. It's beyond my understanding, but while it's happening, these people need to be held to account. We don't have to, let's start with one incident, which there are many, one incident and bring these people, arrest them, put them through court and, you know, provided it, all the rules of evidence and so on are met, they have to be punished. Very important uh, element that is missing today. Yeah, very valid point there. Um, we'll take a short break now and we'll return with more of the discussions on this matter after the break. Welcome back to the program, the first for this year, 2022, a special one-hour edition brought to you by MTV with the support of our good friends from the Media Development Initiative. Now, if you've just joined us, we are discussing the topic, uh, sorcery accusation related violence and joining me for the discussions, our good member for Alotau, uh, Charles Abel, who is also the chairman for the Special Parliamentary Committee on Gender-Based Violence and also Shelly Kaupa an advocate for human rights here in Papua New Guinea. Um, just before the break, we were discussing uh, on the uh, bringing those perpetrators uh, to justice. And, and, I, and I think, and justice for, for those who, are, who have been accused and, and also um, their rights being violated in the process. And, 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 and we see throughout the country, Papua New Guinea, I think um, 
many still don't understand that the law of uh, uh, 1971 has been repealed. Um, many still continue to hold on to that uh, law that it's still okay to bring, uh, uh, you know, to punish people or bring the law into their own hands. Uh, and, and, and rightly so, um, Mr. Abel pointed out that a crime is still a crime. Now, we'll hear from Shelly Kaupa now on her thoughts of, of what uh, happened recently with regards to the women um, in Kagua uh, in the Southern Highlands province. Shelly. Our, our call to action uh, from the civil society, our call to action was uh, we, we indicated both the long-term and the short-term um, approach to in respond to the South at uh, Kagua and Pogara Layagam. So one of the short-term um, recommendation was uh, supporting the police, in which uh, we call on uh, the members of parliament and all the others who wants to support uh, the business houses so the police can be fully equipped to go out uh, to Kagura. And at the same time, we are um, making a strong um, awareness of um, we stop impunity and we want, we call for prosecution. So we've also, um, we've also call on the commissioner that uh, every month, a group of human rights uh, defenders will go down to the police headquarters to check the status of the uh, South case at Kagoa and Pogera Lyagam as well. So we take these stances and we were just waiting that um, the police will do their work. Um, last week, I saw on the newspaper that one of the village court magistrate was brought uh, for question and arrest. So it gives me the hope that uh, when a leader has been brought forward, I hope um, the others or the perpetrators themselves can uh, come in. And also we call on the police that whoever on that day, they are the leaders and they are bystanders. Uh, we call for arrest or mass arrest. Anyone that is standing there and watching must also be identified and brought forward. All right. So these are our, our short-term uh, recommendations and um, call for action. And our long-term, um, we made one recommendation to the uh, education department that um, under the CCDE's um, subject and personal development, Ohari, there must be uh, specific uh, issues or case studies uh, we teach our students about gender-based violence, uh, human rights, and all these things, so they can be aware. So the teachers can be um, educators about these issues in the school. All right. So our students from primary up to secondary, they must learn about human rights and uh, gender-based violence and all this. They are very, very um, serious um, concern for us and um, the outcomes and the implication and consequences of these actions are, uh, you know, Don't sharing you the community, breaking family. It has caused the government to spend a lot of money, a lot of money. And we were having a discussion yesterday, the, the protection workers and gender workers, we were saying, oh, we've tried all our best in terms of responding and prevention to solve and gender-based violence, but these things are powerful and they have, you know, got 10 times. We were trying that we're going to catch them and beat them. No, they are like going higher. So it's just a matter how we approach it. Um, collaboration, partnership, networking, using the right languages in terms of messaging and advocacy and awareness, um, having the right people on the job. All these things will empower the effectiveness of how we approach uh, gender-based violence and so on. So, as you've said, the actions from the CSO, we have three um, 
media conference, one organized by governor um, of NCD, one organized by the CSOs themselves, and one organized by the uh, PNG Church Council and um, Catholic Bishops Conference, where all of us were invited, the human rights defenders, and we were part of it. So, And within the three um, media conferences, we also have the recommendations, and they have been sent to the appropriate and the relevant authorities to look into it. So we hope that um, in the light of justice, we hope that uh, one or two will be brought forward. And it's not only we setting the um, deterrent, but also right to life is a fundamental right for every citizens of this country. And we have the best constitution in the country that the preamble states about human rights. And we must respect the law and law is right there. We can't reinvent the wheel or we can't create another wheel. We have everything that is there. The police are there, the village court systems are there, everything. So right to life, the fundamental right of every citizen of Papua New Guinea and the people, the rights bearers, the police, the DJ, the FOMDEV, they are rights bearers. Our mandated leaders of the parliament, they are right bearers. And they make sure that they are uphold the rights of every individual Papua New Guineans. That's why we choose people to represent us. And I take this time to thank our parliamentary committee for gender-based violence and the coalition. And I'm so happy that, you know, at the highest level we have, we have the political will that supports us and our voices are being heard. And we thank them for continuously uh, supporting this call. All right. Thank you. Good comments there. Um, we'll take a short break now and uh, come back on the other side uh, with more of the good discussions uh, that we're having on the program. Hello and welcome back to the program. You're watching In Focus, the first program for 2022, a one-hour special, of course, on sorcery accusation-related violence, uh, our topic of discussion um, and now we'll take, uh, we'll see a short video of uh, survivors of violence, a safe house in Mendy, Southern Highlands province. That's where uh, the St. Francis Care Home Center is located. Look, they've been looking after a family uh, who've been removed from their village, accused of practicing sorcery, tortured, and the whole family of 15 uh, have been told to leave the village for good. That's for two years they've been living in the Care Home Center. We'll watch that video now. The St. Francis Care Home Center is a refuge for women and children in times of trouble. Located in Mendy, it's been the home for this family who were removed from the village after they suspected the women for practicing sorcery. The mother and her two daughters were blamed for their cousin brother's death. Since then, they were removed by their uncles, their father's biological brothers, and told to never return. Their village home destroyed, they now live in the care home. All cooking house, cars in house, bagrat in garden, all the rest of the world. Yes, we have one father, one mama, and we have a family in our community. Cecilia Solo was pregnant when she was tortured. She and her baby survived the ordeal. We have a lot of people who have been in the police, and we have a lot of people who have the founder of the St. Francis Care Home Center says there have been many women like them who have come and gone over the years. Any girl outside, Lord Mama, three blind die, me blind him all. No got one less I come, I was crying too, or some blind blow. Young girl, nice blind Mary, me blind him all. Interest groups on the ground say men usually blame the poor and less fortunate for practicing sorcery. Now, me yet me physically or some me stuff inside the community and me looking. A video there that we've seen of, of a family that were um, told to leave the village for good. The house was bent down um, in uh, the Southern Highlands province. Um, uh, very concerning uh, if you're told to leave your once beloved home and you're just living in in a care home center um it's hard of course um, for this family and and 
na time yumi look look long display video eh. yumi tinim sa po semi kama long family long yumi ato line yumi sabi long yam ah, tamo li toki mo long stop lusim kai kai lusim garden lusim hapol sa kisim ah, pulap yung wara na drink long yam lookout yung family na holy ghost stop long hap long narap la hap um, look uh, ikat all good la line all sem uh, St. Francis ke home center na line long holy walk long sa po timo long walk yung kain all walk na um, yumi look sabi long all walk long all too um, shelly we understand no sem you bla too you walk long walk boom one time plant bon long line all sem tribal foundation na uh, onar bla too inside long highlands all partners long you me too uh, we walk long halibim i think you may need to look sabe long walk long all too saint francis uh, k home i i know um it has been um, run by rebecca that's correct rasta maria with the support of uh, mendy diocese mendy hella diocese um bishop don lipat and they've been doing great work. Um, they've been um, acknowledged, and also they received the Human Rights Award in 2018 by uh, U.S. Embassy Catherine Abbott Gray for um, taking care of the survivors and victims of uh, social reappreciation. So, um, generally speaking, um, we we don't have all these care centers and safe houses around the country. And we don't also have the system that takes care of this kind of people. And it's very, very hard. Um, a lot of time, survivors and victims of gender-based violence or SARS, they just go and stand and hang around the police station in a way that some protection is given because they are within the vicinity of the police station. And um, I know... Um, Recently, uh, the Catholic um, Bishops Conference through their social services, they were trying to put safe houses in all the diocese in Papua New Guinea and Puka uh, Solomon Highlands. So, as I've said, it needs a um, sector-wide approach in terms of uh, protection, and um, reintegration back into the community and then sustainability. When they leave the village, they leave everything that they have. And they go to a care center, care home, and then when they go back into another place, um, you know, they are just like nobody. So we have issues with that. And this is something that we really need to look in terms of protection. We're providing safe houses, and then we look at integration and sustainability, and we make sure that they are safe from one part to the end so we can close the case. A lot of time, we just leave them and, you know, just because we are PNG, we help one another. People are taking refuge in one country or cousin or kind of same number of notes as part, so. It's um, it's a way of you know rethinking and re-strategizing and identifying the best practices, pulling partners and networks together and strengthen it from the district level to the sub-national and then down to the national. And even in NCD itself, we have uh, five safe houses, but at this very time. Um, two of the safe houses are operating and the other three are down because they need resources. So it's very hard to um, get someone from FSBU and send them to the safe houses. It's hard. We have to uh, be smart to make sure that we send the uh, survivor to a place that he or she is not victim, re-victimized again and some protection has been given. Now, before we go, a final word from you, Ms. Table. All her comments, which are very, very true. I, just quickly, in relation to the video you, sh you showed, one of the key points that the lady was mentioning is that you'll notice that the victims, they, they tend to pick on those poor, helpless, vulnerable women and even children. And uh, it goes to this issue of, uh, you know, what is the basis of the sorcery accusation related violence? You, it seems to me an excuse to pick on the weak and vulnerable and to just uh, take out your frustrations about land or your jealousy or just little kind of thing. One of the 
weakest members in your community, or you pick on an innocent child. So this issue, to me, it's not a genuine issue. It's genuine in that it is there, but the basis of it is not genuine. It's an excuse to harm innocent, uh, vulnerable people because you because they are vulnerable, they are weak. And this is sick and, uh, and totally unacceptable. But again, we thank people like St. Francis Care, Care Home and others that are on the front line. And that is why one of the key recommendations in our report is that some of the funding that government provides must go directly to supporting those people on the front line. We don't want the money to disappear in setting up a, another expensive government structure. And then the people that are doing the real work on the ground, they have no money. So apart from the government agencies like the police and the prosecutors and all that that need to be enforced, Department of Health, the frontline uh, community-based organizations and NGOs must uh, also be supported. The other important element is that uh, we need the provincial governments and the local governments to also get engaged and involved. And that is why um, part of the policy as well, very important provincial governments have their local gender-based violence and SARS related uh, policies and the and, and it is um it is uh, contemplated for within the structures at that level so things like the safe houses and 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 the counseling uh even 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 the school programs can uh cater for it and then we all work together and where there is good ngos there or community-based organizations already providing the service we don't have to go and create another one we just support them this is one of the critical elements that I talked about. But otherwise, the law is there, the police are there, you know, good NGOs are there. We are aware of the issue. We just need to make the system work better. Of course, resource it better, make it work, and we need to bring prosecutions, make some one or two or three or more, but at least some examples uh, that the law is working and government is working and that those people that are committing these horrific crimes have been held to account Make you sabe lilikna online by look lookna or by clear lilik or some you Brooklyn law. You cannot take life of, an, of of another person and take it in the manner that they are doing of torturing and causing maximum pain is is just sick. And uh, you know it has to stop. And as as a chairman of our gender based parliamentary uh, committee, I want to repeat that this behavior is completely uh, unacceptable, and all of us have to work together to stamp it out in, uh, in Papua New Guinea. We have come to the end of uh, our discussions on the first episode of In Focus for 2022. Um, today, we would like to thank our panelists to join us for, for the program discussions on social accusation related violence. Of course, the member for Alotau, who is the chairman for the Special Parliamentary Committee on Gender-Based Violence, uh, Mr. Charles Sable, and also uh, Shelley Kaupa, who is an advocate for human rights here in Papua New Guinea. Gentlemen, lady and, and viewers, thank you very much for joining us on the program. If you have comments on tonight's program, you can email us on the email now showing on your screen, or you can also engage with us social on our social media pages. Uh, that's now also showing on your screen. From all of us here, it's been a pleasure. We also thank our partner um, in this uh, one hour special, the Media for Development Initiative, great partners there. From all of us here, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.